know many times we are always looking at lord what must i do right so everything can become right have you ever thought like that <laughs> what must i do right what must i have right how must i be right so everything can become right in my life you know many a times we think about that and god inspired me to believe another way saying i should believe for what i want to have what i want to see happen what i want to experience you know all this uh, you need to become right to have right you know that god will take care and i was asking god okay prove that to me from the scripture right if you, if that's you then the spirit of god reminded me of this passage of scripture from first corinthians 13 it says when i knew in part i prophesied in part but when the perfection comes it will take care of all that i know in part say that's god when i mean when i knew in part in another sense when i knew whatever i knew i can only do so much but when the perfection comes everything will be taken care of and who is the one who brings perfection it's jesus you know in the beginning when god created the heavens and the earth the earth was without form and void and god said let there be light and there was light and god filled the face of the earth which was without form and void with all form and all void so if we are struggling with any habits you know this is not just you know attitudes and everything if you're struggling with any bad habits thinking you know that's the reason i'm not having can i tell you something don't instead of asking god lord take this habit away from me or even i will go down to the level of saying lord take this sin away from me you know sometimes when when we when i say sin it makes more sense than you know what i'm doing right or wrong you know if you are struggling with that thought forget that he will fill you with all that is needed so that all that needs to go away will go when light comes in darkness will naturally disappear what god has filled you is with all of his fullness so from today instead of worrying what need i need to do right start believing things are going to happen right for me start expecting you know good things good happenings for me amen Are you excited about the good days that you're going to see? Are you excited about the good things that you're going to see? Are you excited about, you know, good happenings that is going to happen to you? Good experiences, good promotions, good health, good prosperity, everything that comes from God. I'm excited to see that. You know, just this last week, uh, we were talking about changing the setup of the church a little bit. and then we spoke to elshin and all of us we had a meeting and then you know we said okay let's change the lighting like now we see all these lights too bright and everything right we said okay let's change the lights and everything and then the estimate is around 2 lakh you know the lights all those uh, jing bangs we want to buy and i was thinking is it even needed for a place like that you know sometimes we think very little i think not you you all big thinkers you know I think very little. But then this morning I said, if God is my giver, why should I think little? So here I'm not appealing you to give. Right? It's not an appeal to give. I know God is my provider. And when God provides all those breakthroughs for you, you will have so much that you can give. I know that. But what I'm trying to tell you is this. Have faith. big things and you know expect to see those big things dream big and expect to see those big things happen amen okay let's get into the word for this week we've been talking about the spirit being when god created adam he wanted him to be a spirit being that's why we read god breathed his breath of life into his nostrils and he became a living being so when god breathed into him he get he became a living being and the life he lived he was not living his life by his rational reasoning strength he was living life by what the spirit of god was communicating through him amen every action every reaction every response 
everything he did you know he was not responding to what was happening outside he was living a life by which the spirit of god was communicating into a spirit he was able to recognize he was able to say it he was able to speak it out he was able to name the animals he was able to recognize who he was not because he could rationalize it because the spirit was communicating into his spirit amen so that's why god wanted you and i to be a spirit being so when god said the day you eat of this fruit you will die he was not talking about the spirit, the physical death the death of the physical man he was talking about the death of the spirit in man and when jesus came he said i've come to give life life in abundance he was not talking about the physical body of course the physical body needs the healing health and life but he was talking about life to the spirit inside of man so you can get into this new lifestyle where you don't live your life based on what's happening outside what is happening around you what people are thinking about you what people are talking about you what the economy is what your situation is but you will live a life where the spirit communicates according to his purposes according to his predestiny according to the promises and you live your life based on what the spirit communicates amen that's why many a times when things go wrong instead of you worrying i'm sure you'd have had this experience where you know instead of worrying instead of being sad instead of crying instead of complaining you will sit back there and say i'm going to make it i'm going to do it i'm going to succeed i'm going to prosper i'm going to come out strong why the spirit of god is communicating contrary to what's happening outside have you ever been there people are saying it's not going to happen to you but you have the audacity to stand there and say i don't care what you say but i know it's going to happen to me it's not you it's not based on the facts of this world it's based on the reality of god's word communicating his plan inside of you amen that's why when daniel was thrown into the lions den he was not scared because he knew he was going to survive the lions den you know why not because some lion came and spoke to him saying you come and sir i'm not going to bite you i'm not going to eat you it's because the spirit of god gave him the boldness inside of him to believe that he is not going to die he is going to survive the lions den that's why the three young men when they were thrown into the fiery furnace they didn't they were not scared you know why not because of the fury not because there was a you know fireproof uh, dress that was given to them but it was a spirit of god telling them you will survive this amen that's why they were able to take a stand saying i am going to do what i want to do regardless of what you expect from me Amen. Spirit being. Turn to the person next to you and tell them I'm a spirit being. I don't live by what I see, I live by what he says. I don't live by what the others say, I live by what the spirit of God tells inside of me. The the reality might be vastly different, so difficult, so grave, so dangerous, but I am still going to do it i am still going to survive i am still going to make it why because the spirit of the lord tells within my spirit that i am going to do it amen i am going to make it i am going to experience it i am going to enjoy it you are a spirit being so instead of listening to the world listen to the word with the word that comes from the mouth of god you know that's why jesus had the boldness to say man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god you don't need the world's bread to survive when you have the 
divine word you can survive anything when i say divine word this word from the heart of god when you talk about the word god's word you know you it's not just the bible it's not just this you know it's a heart of god expressed through the experiences of all the authors who wrote this so the authors who wrote the bible you know they, they it's not just you know okay follow this do this do that you know they experience god in such a way and then they expressed it saying this is the heart of god for you word of god means you know understanding the heart of god for you now tell me god's heart is it for you to live or die god's heart is it for you to be poor or prosper God's heart is it for you to live in sickness or in health God's heart is it for you to be degraded or upgraded God's heart is it for you to enjoy or be in sorrow enjoy So when you understand this when your spirit grabs it you know no matter what happens you will know what God's heart is and you will understand that by that word that comes from the mouth of god you will live amen now uh, are you clear you're a spirit being if you're a spirit being it is like this you may not have it today but you won't be bothered by it amen you may not have it today but you won't be bothered by it you know why because the word of god says you can and you shall okay now i want to turn your bibles to romans chapter 8 romans chapter 8 was uh 5 onwards those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires but those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires the mind governed by the flesh is death but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace the mind governed by the spirit is so when i say i am a spirit being what happens to me is my mind is not governed by flesh what is flesh is it you know the chunk that is underneath my skin you know it is human knowledge and human wisdom that is flesh when you talk about flesh you know uh, some people relate that to sin also but i would put it this way anything that is dependent on human wisdom human knowledge human calculation human reasoning human understanding that is called flesh and anything that doesn't make sense but still you believe it that is called spirit get it see when uh, the disciples brought to jesus five loaves and two fishes and what did the disciples say human flesh i'm i'm try, trying to bring the distinction between human flesh and divine spirit okay they said it is not enough why five plus to five loaves and two fish is for one person to enjoy a meal and they said even if we have one year salary it is not enough to feed these people that is human flesh okay but according to the divine knowledge what did jesus do oh man this 5 plus 2 is more than enough they get it water it the jesus i mean mary said mother of jesus said do whatever he says and what did jesus say oh they ran out of wine So what did Jesus say? Go and make wine. Go to Mother Lokia and you know see how many wine bottles you can get. Did he say that? Okay, I know a friend he runs a winery. Let's go and you know buy enough wine for all of them. Did Jesus say that? No, he said pour water into the jars. And they were like water human flesh. Flesh how can water be in how can water you know satisfy all the wine drinkers here that's human flesh but jesus said pour water pour it out 
go and serve it out as they were serving it out it became wine how did jesus know that because he was not his mind was not governed by the flesh but his mind was governed by the spirit isn't that an exciting life when everybody tells you you know mind governed by the flesh people tell you you know it's not going to happen you're not going to make it you're not going to do it you're not going to achieve it you're not going to have it but there the spirit of god and comes and whispers into your heart don't believe them don't accept it don't acknowledge it don't say yes to that i have a different plan and my plans are to prosper you and to give you an expected and i am a god who gives you more than you ask and you pray i am a god who can do the impossible for you i am a god who can make ways for you in the wilderness and rivers for you in the desert i am a god who can turn your nothing into something i am a god who can give you some not something out of nothing i'm a god who can turn your sorrows into joy i'm a god who can turn your mourning into dancing he whispers all these things and you accept it what you become you have become a spirit being whose mind is governed by the spirit i want to be a spirit being turn to the person next to you and tell them i'm a spirit being Now tell them my mind is not governed by flesh my mind is governed by the spirit You know in the bible we read like this every good and perfect gift comes from from underneath the earth from your hard work because of your persistent consistent you know hard work no every good and perfect gift comes from from where and how do you receive all that comes from above you pull it down throw you know who can say okay no the spirit of god whispers amen mind governed by the spirit so if you are a spirit being this is how you will be mind will be governed by the spirit what is the characteristic of the spirit now tell me now we are going deeper okay what is the characteristic of the spirit come on you should know this what is the character trait of a man he will see and he will believe what is the character trait of a spirit we will persevere in our spirit right we don't go by what we see we go by what we believe right and it says uh what is seen as temporal what is unseen as permanent we go by what we don't see okay now what is the character trait of the spirit you know the character trait of the spirit is fruit of the spirit how many of you know what the fruit of the spirit is love come on repeat it after me can you put that up in galatians love joy peace patience kindness gentleness and self control so your mind will be always filled with what happens to the mind governed by the spirit filled with come on can we put that up okay uh, okay everyone read that okay a person governed by the spirit their mind will be in this state at all times when things go bad this is how we will be when things go right this is how we will be when things go kaput you will be like this when things are fine you will be like this can we read it this is how the state of your mind will be at all times if you are governed by the spirit can we read it but the mind who whose mind is governed by the spirit it will be like this 1 2 3 how will it be love joy peace forbearance kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self control at all times you will be so different from the world mind governed by the flesh anger irritable syndrome anxiety panic attack you know depression what else is there oppressed you know all the negative things they will be like this but you because you are governed by the spirit this is how you will be 
love, joy. You'll be so calm, peace. You, you can withstand anything, you know, forbearance. Come on, bring it on. Betrayal, bring it on. Negativity, bring it on. Gossip, bring it on. Speak bad about me, bring it on. Backstab me, bring it on. Because who are you? You are a mind governed by the spirit. Does it make sense? And I'll tell you another aspect of you also. Okay? Can you put gifts of the spirit? These are the things you will manifest at all times. We are talking, you know, I need the anointing. I need someone to pray over me. I need someone to bless me, lay their hands on me. No, you don't need anyone. You need an awakening. And what I'm doing today is giving you an awakening about who you are. A mind governed by the spirit. You are a spirit being whose mind is governed by the spirit. Okay, and because your mind is governed by the spirit, you will have the fruit of the spirit. Your mindset will be filled with joy, love, peace, forbearance, gentleness, kindness. And the next thing is, you will have the gifts of the spirit. Okay, now this is what you will manifest at all times. Turn to the person next to you and tell them, This is me. Pastor is talking about my abilities. Okay, can we read it? To one there is given through the spirit a message of can you can you put it in KJV please? It makes more sense in King James Version. Okay. For one is given by the Spirit of Spirit, the word of wisdom. Wherever you go, whatever you speak at all times, what will you speak? Wisdom, not the wisdom of this world. Sir. Go see this doctor. That's a wisdom. I'm not saying doctors are bad. Okay. I'm not saying don't go to the doctor. But you will speak the wisdom of God. That means I will lay my hands on you. And by your stripes you will be healed. You will speak divine wisdom. You know when we talk about divine wisdom. It speaks like this. God chose the foolishness of the world to confound the the wise of this world that means God's wisdom confounds the wisdom of this world the wisdom of this world will say you know you need to have a saving plan and by the by the time you retire at 50 I mean by the time you reach 50 you should retire but can I tell you the wisdom of this world uh, that's the wisdom of this world. You need to have a serving plan, long-term plan, this plan, that plan, investment and all of that. But for me, life starts at 50. Oh, don't think I'm 50. I'm not there yet. I mean, they can say by, by retire, by 50, you should retire. 50 then I'll start a from there. <laughs> by, by, by the time you reach 100, you should have seen your great grandchildren. But you know God's style. When you reach 100, He will make you have your first child and say, Come on, enjoy Madipa. 100 wrinkled body, you know, wrinkled skin, no appetite for anything, just want to, you know, pass the day just like that. But God says, 100 are, life starts at 100 for you. Who's the best example for that? Come on, Abraham. Sarah said, At this age, can I find pleasure? I've gone even beyond double menopause I've become. He said, No, darling. You're going to have when you're that age. Hey, that's God. Wisdom from God. Amen. So never think it is late. It is over. It is done. You believe in God's wisdom. And you will speak God's wisdom. A mind governed by the spirit will be, will the character trait is fruit of the spirit. And what you will exhibit is word of wisdom, word of knowledge. And what else? Come on. 10 verse 10. To another, faith. How many of you think what faith is? We think, you know, faith means believing. Faith is believing. No. Simple as that. Can I tell you something more? 
you know when you are so certain about the uncertainty that is faith your mind will be so convinced about the uncertainty like i said you know the budget goes beyond 2 lakh for the lights i'm so convinced you will have it one day one day you walk into the church you will see the haze mission you will feel like man how on earth they all transform this place then you will go invite your friends hey you should come to this cool looking church here they are so cool where does the money come from god is my provider faith being so certain about the uncertain is faith you know and uh, gifts of healing what you will manifest healing wherever you go you will bring healing any situation you go you will bring healing any circumstances you'll go you, you will bring healing any project you step into you will bring healing why you are a mind governed by the spirit why is your mind governed by the spirit because you are a spirit being and there's more okay so now we understand mind governed by the spirit don't you think that's a cool way of living you know you'll be the cool dude in the rest of the world you'll be so different than the rest of the world you know the bible says in romans chapter 12 it says like this do not conform to the patterns of the world but be transformed by the this is that he saying do not conform to the patterns of the world the world cries when they are sad but you will rejoice when sad things happens around you because you know he turns my sorrow into joy the world goes into hiding when things go dark but you will rejoice because you know he will turn my darkness into light he will turn my morning into dancing so i don't conform to the ways of the world i am so peculiar i am so different i will live amen because i'm not a person who conforms to the patterns of the world i'm a person who lives by what the spirit tells me the character trait of the spirit now i want you to uh, want to turn your attention to another aspect are you enjoying this part can i keep going Amen you told me to keep going <laughs> Okay second Corinthians chapter 10 two more and then I'm done second Corinthians chapter 10 mm, verse 4 The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of this world the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world on the contrary they have divine power to demolish strong holds okay paul is writing saying the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world but they have divine power to demolish strong holds what is the divine power what is the weapon here what is the weapon here can i explain that to you a strong mind is your weapon you know in the bible we read like this god has not given to us come on a spirit of god has not given to us a spirit of fear is from the fear is from the devil fear is fear is flesh man a flesh man will always react in fear respond in fear act in fear That's why when the storms were raging you know Jesus wakes up from his sleep and then he calms the storm and then he goes on to say why are you afraid you of little faith you see that flesh is filled with fear so the weapons that Paul is talking here is strong mind turn to the person next to you and tell them i am a strong minded person God has not given to us a spirit of fear but of power love and a sound mind So when Paul is saying 
the weapons i fight with is not the weapons of this world but it has divine power that means my mind is empowered by the divine strong mind i have the fruit of the spirit i have the gifts of the spirit i am fruit of the spirit minded i am gift of the spirit minded that is a weapon that god has blessed me with amen so everyone sitting here if you believe you are a spirit being you are a strong mind person you will not be scared at all times at all times you will be filled with power and love amen and good let's see what all it says okay second oh, corinthians chapter 10 it says the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world on the contrary they have divine power to demolish strong holds what is strong holds here wrong thinking or a thinking pattern that keeps you captivated you now some people no matter how much you talk to them they can never think beyond a certain level they can never think beyond only this much how can i have this brain how can i buy this house how can i drive this car how can i have this how can my children prosper you know i come from this community i come from this class i come from this caste i come from this state i'm from tamil nadu so i can't speak hindi you choose not to speak hindi you can say hindi theriyadu poda that's fine but you don't say you can't you know sometimes when people say i can't i get really mad i said why can't you why are you saying i can't who told you so see that's exactly what G, what god asked adam and eve when they said i am naked he came and asked them who told you so how dare you can believe you are naked I didn't make you naked man I created you with my glory my glory clothed you how on earth you could believe that you're naked how on earth you can say you can't see today god brought you here to break that stronghold that says you can't you're not going to go with i can't you're going to go with i am i'm going to i can i will amen don't look at what's happening around you to determine what you can have what you cannot have look at what the spirit of god is telling you strong mind and believing it having the audacity to believe it accept it and say i am going to have it i will live i will prosper i will progress amen and we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of god what we demolish arguments and every pretension sometimes you know there's a war that is going inside of us in the bible we read in galatians like this there is a constant battle between the spirit and the flesh have you read that the spirit battles against the flesh the flesh battles against the spirit so this is the argument you know and today what's happening or oh, every argument every pretension is being demolished and brought under the brought to comply to the knowledge of god how many of you know what god can how many of you know what god can do you will your mind will comply to that amen there's a breakthrough How many of you believe that? There is a breakthrough happening right now. You may not see it, but you will you will experience it. You know, you may not even feel it, but it will show up. If God promised saying a virgin shall give birth and he shall be called Emmanuel and true to that, you know, Jesus was born thousands of years later. Do you think God can do anything for you? yes everything for you yes and today your mind is you know taking uh, every pretension everything that fights against the knowledge of what god can 
and saying, no, you can't have it. It can't happen to you. It can't happen to you. You cannot, you cannot achieve it, you know. But God is saying, I will do it for you. If God, who took David as shepherd boy, going after the sheep to become the king of a nation, he can do the same for you. Amen. So now, look at who God is and have a mindset based on that. Don't look at your circumstances. Don't look at the flesh tell you. Don't look at the world realm tell you. Don't look at the natural realm tell you how you can be, what you can have. Look at God and decide who you are going, who you are going to be. What you are going to have. What you are going to achieve. Knowledge of God. Amen. Your mind becomes strong based on who God is. And the second thing here it says and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Make it obedient to Christ. You know, I will talk about it some other time but because we are short of time I want to move on to another aspect you know show you one example of this and then I will I will finish okay Joseph Joseph they threw I mean an example of mind governed by the spirit Joseph they threw Joseph into the pit and from the pit he went to Potiphar's house okay and then in Potiphar's house we read something like this God was with Joseph and Joseph was prosperous okay what do you mean by God was with Joseph I will explain he was spirit minded <laughs> that's what it is you know having been thrown into the pit when he went into Potiphar's house his mindset should have been pit mind but he was not looking at the betrayal of his brothers you know one preacher put it, put it out like this he said something like this they stripped Joseph of his robe but they could never strip Joseph of his dreams they stripped him of his robe but they could never strip him of his dream he was standing I mean he was spirit minded in Potiphar's house he didn't let the pit determine his mindset he didn't let the pit Give him a mindset. He said, the spirit of God is. The spirit of God inside of me. He was listening to the spirit of God. When he was working there, he was not working there, you know, based on, oh, betrayal happened to me. My brothers betrayed me. I'm missing my father. I'm missing Israel. I'm missing my father's cozy home. I'm missing his comfort. I'm missing, and I, he was not living like that. He stepped into Potiphar's house, a, a strange nation, a foreign nation, strange people, strange behavior. Everything was so different. He because he was living by the spirit though the situation was contrary though the circumstances were contrary he was giving out his best you know why he was spirit minded how could he have excelled in a foreign nation in a foreign culture just like that spirit of God talking to him and then they threw him into the pit prison again from the pit he went into the prison okay and after prison where did he go the next day one night he was sleeping in prison the next morning he was sleeping in he was eating having his breakfast in the palace can I tell you something they say something about the swine like this, the pigs like that. You can take the pig, you can wash it, clean it, and then you show them, what do you call it? Gutter, and show them a nice table where, what will they choose? They will go to the gutter, roll around, you know, be happy in it. Kink, 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 they'll make their noise, roll around. It takes a strong mind to live in the palace. As he was walking into the palace, you know, they would have called him, Sir. All these days he was saying, Sir, how are you, sir? 
are you eating sir okay sir i'll go into the cell it's time for me to the bell rings i'll step out for breakfast the bell rings i will go into my room but here everybody is serving him everybody is greeting him everybody is appreciating him they are giving him nice food they gave him a ni- nice steak with a fork and a knife they served served him the best of wine there were mannerisms and everything how on earth he could have lived that kind of a life he never allowed what happened to him give him a mindset he was always palace minded dreams minded you know progress minded and who did that the spirit of god inside of him you know before he could go into the palace pharaoh recognizes joseph like this it is not joseph it is a spirit of god in joseph you could have gone through anything so bad but still live a strong life if you allow the spirit of god to instill his mind inside of you amen now many times i hear people saying you know trauma projection why are they behaving the way they behave they are projecting their traumas they've been whatever they've been through in their young age you know whatever i'm not demeaning that right we have counselors for that we have uh, psychiatrists for that we have people to help them find but for you and me who is who are sitting under the power of this word i'm telling you you can walk out of every trauma and have a good mind to live a good life amen you don't need to be a projector of what happened to you when you were young you always i mean i'm really i was so excited when the spirit of god showed me this about joseph it took joseph not even a day to live in the in the palace okay he didn't he didn't get time to adjust to the palace immediately he was into doing everything why he was constantly a spirit being even in the pit he was a spirit being he didn't allow the pit to give him a mindset even in potiphar's house he was a spirit being even in the prison he was a spirit being so when the palace came it was easy for him to live that life can i tell you something about you you want to know something the reality about you the bible says in ephesians chapter 1 and 2 god exalted jesus above high above every power every authority every dominion and made him seat at his right hand where is jesus seated above every power every authority every name every dominion of this earth okay that is where jesus is seated can i tell you your palace can i tell you your palace in ephesians chapter 2 it says like this god who was rich in love raised you up with christ jesus and made you sit with christ jesus at his right hand you are forever a palace person amen you are never meant to live defined by the world but defined by the word you are not defined by the earth you are defined by the palace that's why the bible says come boldly to the throne room of where it says where should you come throne room who has access to the throne room? you and i we have access to everything that belongs to god you know pope pharaoh told joseph something like this everything my men my finances my chariots my palace my resources except me everything is under your disposal 
God is telling the same thing. All of heaven is at your disposal. You are a palace person. So be spirit minded. Amen. Today, how many of you think it's a day of breakthrough? Don't think less about yourself. Think great. Think big about yourself. Expect the impossible is becoming possible. Expect the great things to happen. Amen. You are history makers in this world.